Hello and welcome to the Beaches Museum. I'm Keith Baker, one of the docents, and today I'm going to talk to you about Jimmy Doolittle. In America, the 1920s was a golden age of aviation. It was an era when aviators were adventurous, romantic, swashbuckling pioneers whose reputation for daring and courage were earned in a calling where crippling injuries and violent, fiery deaths were accepted as simply occupational hazards. Among them was a product of the aviation section of the United States Army Signal Corps, a lieutenant named James Harold Doolittle, and we'll come back to him. The beaches of Jacksonville cultivated early aviation interest due to the local Board of Trade sponsoring air shows to attract tourists. The aircraft, these leading edges of technology, were displayed on the sand and seen performing in the air. Also, at least one flight ended in a disastrous crash, so there was something for everyone. In 1912, the first successful flight to span the United States began in Los Angeles and ended here at Pablo Beach. This flight had taken 115 days. For a decade, these flights continued but saw only sporadic success. Regardless, Pablo Beach was becoming a favorite aviation departure and destination due to its shoreline's wide, naturally hard-packed sand, a hospitable year-round weather, and the east-west latitudes of Jacksonville, Florida, and San Diego, California. Army Lieutenant James Doolittle was known for his exploits in the air when he attempted a transcontinental flight on 4 September 1922 from what is now Neptune Beach. He successfully launched his Great War de Havilland DH-4 biplane and basically flew what would become Interstate I-10 to Kelly Field in San Antonio, Texas. After mechanical checks and refueling, he relaunched and landed in San Diego 22.5 hours after takeoff. This feat shattered speed records and demonstrated to the American public that aviation just might have potential for civilian transcontinental flights.